rise, run, and finding the slope of a line. This is lesson 3.5a in geometry, and this whole lesson, 3.5, is about slopes. We've got 10 previous lessons for Chapter 3 that are linked at the end of the video as an end card or in the playlist. You can see the geometry playlist and just find the right videos you want to see. The slope of a line in a coordinate plane is a number that describes the steepness of the line. It's how steep it is, like how steep is a hill or a mountain. Any two points on a line can be used to determine the slope. And the rise is the difference in y values of two points on a line. The run is the difference in x values of two points on a line. And the slope of a line is the ratio of rise to run. So take a look inside the parentheses here. We've got if x sub 1 and we've got y sub 1, that would be one point, and x sub 2, y sub 2, that would be another point, are any two points on a line. The slope of a line is found with this formula. That's what we're going to be working with. It's the slope formula. Okay? So, you heard me say sub 1 and sub 2. The little numbers to the bottom right of our x and y are called subscripts. And it tells us which one we're talking about. So, x sub 1, y sub 1 tells us that's the ordered pair for the first point. x sub 2, y sub 2 tells us it's the ordered pair for the second point. It helps us identify which is which. And we're going to use the slope formula, this right here, and we're going to substitute in the numbers from our x and y values into this formula. So take a look at this. Here we have a graph and we have a line that's graphed here. We have a point for the first x is a 4 and the first y is a 3. So we've got 4 comma 3. That's our ordered pair. Then we've got 8 for x and 8 for y. And a line is drawn through them. And we can see the rise and the run. The rise, we just count the boxes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The run is 1, 2, 3, 4. See? Our ordered pairs are a 4 for x sub 1 and a 3 for y sub 1, an 8 for x sub 2, and an 8 for y sub 2. And using the slope formula, an m as the slope, whenever you see m, it's going to represent the slope, we have our y sub 2, Take away our y sub 1, so we have 8 minus 3. Then we have our x sub 2 as 8. Take away x sub 1 as a 4. So we've got a 5 for our rise and a 4 for our run. Just like we counted when we counted the squares, we had a 5 and a 4. So it's the rise over the run. Our slope is 5 fourths. And we could simplify this to 1 and 1 fourth, but we could leave it as 5 fourths. The slope m is the rise over the run. It's the rise over the run. So you could think of it this way for an analogy. When we're sitting, we have to rise before we can run. So it's the rise over the run, OK? Now, I've shown this before in several of my videos. The coordinate plane has four quadrants. One, two, three, four, and we can remember where the quadrants are because it's a coordinate plane that starts with a C and they make the shape of a C. It starts here and curves around and makes the shape of a C for coordinate plane. Then you can remember where all the quadrants are. And we can find the slope of a line by using the coordinates of two different points and the slope formula. So here we have line AB. Identify the ordered pair for point A and point B. So we look at our graph and we see that A is at 2 for x and 3 for y, and B is at 7 for x and 5 for y. So we have our x sub 1, y sub 1, and our x sub 2, y sub 2. We substitute these values into the slope formula, and we end up with a 5 minus 3 and a 7 minus 2. That'll give us a rise of 2 over a run of 5. So our slope is 2 fifths. And we can even count them. Here's the rise. It's 2 squares. 
Here's the run. It's five squares. It's two-fifths. See? So we can even look at the graph and do it, couldn't we? If the slope is a positive value, our line will rise to the right. Our slope would be like a positive four, see? Even this is positive. Even though it's a fraction, two-fifths, it's still a positive, right? If the slope is negative, the, it's a negative value, the line will fall to the right. So we would have a negative slope, so it'd be like m equals negative four, okay? So here we have our slope formula right here. The slope is the rise over the run, and we use that formula. We can identify our ordered pairs. We've got, if we look at here, we can count the squares. One, two, three. We've got a four for x and a negative three for y. We have a four for x and a positive five for y. So those are our ordered pairs. We Substitute them into the formula, and we get a 5 minus a negative 3 over a 4 minus 4. Remember, when you subtract a negative, you add the opposite. So we're going to do 5 plus a positive 3. So that's going to be an 8. Then we're going to have a 0. But the problem is, when a fraction has a 0 in its denominator, it's undefined. It's impossible to divide by 0. If you look, both x values are the same. See that? When the slope is undefined, the line is vertical, and all the x-coordinates are alike. When we're given a line with no given points, if it's just a blank line, we can pick any two points on the line to determine the slope. All a line is is thousands of points so smashed together that you don't see the space between them. Pretty much that's what it is. So you could pick any point on a line, but it's easiest to pick points where x and y intersect on the grid lines. Then we don't need to deal with decimals or fractions. If you look at the grid lines, you look at for where it's crossing. This one is crossing this one. This one is crossing this one. See, if we picked this point, it's in the middle. That would be a decimal or fraction value, okay? So if we picked a point on the line this would have been the best spot right here, but if we pick this, that's 2.5 for x. We're 1, 2, and a half for x, see? And if we pick this one for y, this is like 0.5 for y. It would have been better if we found a place where our line crossed an intersection of x and y, like right there, see? Can you see another one that would be good? What about right here or right here? See? And it's not quite perfect, but do you see what I'm saying? If you get where the y is crossing the x, we're going to deal with whole numbers, okay? So we start with a point on the left side. So that would be your x sub 1 and y sub 1, whichever one's on the left. So this one's rising to the right. This is going to be a positive slope, isn't it? So we start with this point and... The x value is, and we would count how many boxes over it is, but for the slope, it's going over 4 and it's going up 6. So the rise over the run would be 6 over 4, 6 fourths. For this one, it's falling to the right, so we start on the left and we count down. So that's a negative 7 because we went down. See, this one we counted up because it was rising. So we have a negative 7 over a 6 for our rise over our run. So that's going to be a negative slope, isn't it? We can use the slope formula to determine the slope of a line. We have EF, and we have our x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2 values. And look, it's making a horizontal line, isn't it? And if you look at the values for y, they're the same, aren't they? When we had a vertical line, the x values were the same. Now we have a horizontal line, and the y values are the same. And we use the slope formula, and we substitute these into the formula. So we have a 4 minus 4 and a 9 minus 3. That gives us 0 over 6 for our rise over run. When the rise is 0 and the slope is 0, there's no slope here. It's like Nebraska, like flat land. Okay? It's not like the Rocky Mountains. There's no slope. It's a horizontal line, and all the y-coordinates are alike. 
For this one, the line is falling to the right, so we know our slope will be a negative number, whatever it is. We look at the graph, and we look at our values. For the first point on the left, we've got a 2 for x and a 6 for y. And for our second point, we have a 6 for x and a 2 for y. They kind of swapped places, didn't they? We have a 2, 6, 6, 2. So we put that into our formula. We have a for y sub 2, y sub 1, we've got 2 minus 6. And for x sub 2, x sub 1, we've got 6 minus 2. So we end up with a negative 4 over 4. We simplify that same numerator and denominator, except it's got a negative sign. It's a negative 1. So we did get a negative slope out of that. And we can see the line is falling to the right, which indicates a negative slope. From the slope formula, we found the slope is negative 1. And we can look at the rise and the run on here. It's coming down 4, and it's going over 4. So we have a negative 4 over a 4. See? Now, one interpretation of slope is a rate of change. If y represents miles and x represents time in hours, and the slope gives the rate of change in miles per hour. So Bob is driving from Chicago to Philadelphia. At 3 p.m., he's 200 miles from Chicago. At 6 p.m., he's 380 miles from Chicago. So right away, you can see from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., well, that's three hours, and 200 miles to 380 is 180, isn't it? We graph the line that represents Bob's distance from Chicago at a given time. So we've got... 3 o'clock, 200 miles. So on our graph, all we have here is the time in hours down here, like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, see? And here's the distance in miles. And because the distance was in hundreds, what I did was I made each square equal to 25, so four squares were 100. So it goes 100, 200, 300, 400. And we graph that at 3 o'clock, he was at 200 miles, and at 6 o'clock, he was at 380. Three of these boxes would be 75, so I made it a little bit above it to make it 380. Now, we can take those points, 3, 200, and 6, 380, and we can use the slope formula to find that we've got 180 over 3. We simplify that to 60. So that means Bob is driving an average speed of 60 miles an hour. 60 miles per hour. So the slope was the rate of change here. So the summary of a slope of a line, if it's a positive slope, it rises to the right. If it's a negative slope, it falls to the right. If it's a zero slope, it's a horizontal line. If it's an undefined slope, it's a vertical line. Another way you can look at it is, it's a horizontal line if the rise is a zero, and it's a vertical line if the run is a zero, okay? Our next lesson, we're gonna do slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines in lesson 3.5b. Take good notes. I know I keep saying it, but it's really important because it's just going to help you in the future. All right? So keep trying. I'm proud of you for watching these videos. I really am. And I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.